There was nothing about the starry sky that night to suggest that strange and mysterious things would soon be happening. Speedrunning, a passion almost as old as gaming itself. For decades, gamers have competed in trying to beat their favorite games as fast as possible, and that passion has only grown over the last couple of years. It shouldn't be a surprise that the Harry Potter games have an active and dedicated community who've spent countless hours into optimizing 23 whole games. Harry Potter and the Chamber of Secrets for the PC is an excellent example of that community's efforts throughout the years. The game looks, feels, and plays as though it was meant to be speedrun. It's a 3D adventure platformer jump and run collectathon with different spells you can unlock, Quidditch, duels, challenge stars, secrets, wizard cards, and more. The any percent category alone has seen countless changes of routes and different speed strats, but we won't talk about that today. That category deserves a video of its own, or even several videos. Apparently quite a bit has happened between this run and that run. I'm just here to narrate, okay people? I Anyway, today we'll talk about something different, a category extension for Harry Potter 2, one which has existed for a little less than a year, and it has grown to become by far the most popular and contested category extension, at least for 2022. Ladies and gentlemen, I am Seven Draster Six, and please get comfortable as I tell you the short but fascinating story of Chungus Percent. If memory serves correctly, it was back in January. Nixo, one of the biggest streamers in the Harry Potter community, was live, playing one of them Harry Potter games, when a ruler by the username of Feel My Goods, aka Ryan, joined his chat and remarked that he had found out something truly amazing. He had discovered that if you set Harry's fatness over 250, Every time he jumps, he causes earthquakes and casts every spell at the same time in an area around him. He was eager to try and beat the game in as few actual casts as possible, so he went live with a stream of his own. Nixo raided into his stream shortly after, Ryan was running around as Fat Harry, and the splits at the top said simply, Chungus Percent Low Cast. <laughs> what the fuck just happened? <laughs> Excuse me. Harry Potter and the Chamber of Secrets is a lengthy game on its own. You start off at the Whomping Willow, then you make your way into Defense Against the Dark Arts to learn your first new spell, Rectisempra. After that, Harry learns how to play Quidditch, Brute Potions, cast the other spells, um, Scourge, Defendo, and Spongify. Each of these spells then have their own unique spell challenge that we have to play in order to progress. The Any% percent speedrun abuses a variety of glitches to finish the game quicker. Most notably, there's a brightness boost glitch. Whenever Harry is in the middle of a ledge grab animation, if you are to change the brightness, he gets boosted up into the air. This allows us to skip huge parts of the game, access areas we normally shouldn't be able to. Other glitches include Quidditch warping, to skip entire levels, war walks, clips, you know. But the original idea of Chungus Percent is to beat the game as fast as possible in as few casts as possible. We would use our jumps as our main source of triggering spells. However, unfortunately, you couldn't really get far into the game without casting. There's this corridor in Rick Sempra, for example, where you need to cast on the grabs in order to progress. It quickly became apparent that some areas are impossible castless, even as Chunky Harry. After Ryan messed around and completed a full run as Chungus, a runner by the name of Marx's Law had an idea. He believed it was possible to finish the entire game as Chunky Harry in exactly zero casts by following the route for a different category. It was in fact the shortest category of HP2, in which you unlock all spells right at the start. Let's talk about New Game Plus. 
Who's who's doing that? Ryan is? Where is he? What the fuck is Ryan got New Game Plus is a category that allows you to unlock spells at the start of the run. All of the spells using debug mode. The reason it exists is because the nighttime Hogwarts grounds map is actually different from the daytime one. And during the very first night, our first time on this map, you already have access to the Forbidden Forest, one of the very last levels of the game. The reason we don't go there that early in any percent is because we need the spells we learn throughout the game in order to progress. For example, we cannot cast at Aragog, cut down webs, or do frickin' Scourge Snipe. With the new game plus, however, we can access the forest early with all of the spells already at our disposal by boosting from this little small ledge right here by either jumping into it or landing into it. Then, after going out of bounds, we can enter forest just by walking into the trigger that opens the door to the forest. From then on, it's simply the any percent route for both forest and chamber. By doing this, we can beat the game in under 8 minutes. After Mark's suggestion, Ryan quickly went in to try and beat the game using the NG plus route without casting any spells at all. As Fat Harry, of course. The route seemed to be exactly the same, except for a couple of mishaps which are to be credited to the way Big Harry works. Alright, let's try and remember how to fight the uh, stupid spider now. Bruh. What? Wait! What? Let me see. I have to see if it actually does it. Nope. 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 No! Nope. It doesn't nope. do it. Sad life. <laughs> oh! It does do it! Fuck! Apart from that, Aragog seemed to be a particular nuisance. You couldn't jump on the same web eight times to bring him down, and you had to jump every time to damage him. It was very annoying since you would only charge at us after shooting out his webs and taunting us, giving us very little time to actually attack him. It was apparent that Aragog would be the first source of RNG within the run. It seemed like you could get him off his web and kill him in one cycle. A cycle refers to every time Arago goes back to his web and restarts his animations. Furthermore, there's this room in Chamber 1 that was anything but obvious. You would need to boost all the way up to the final rope to open the gate that gets you through the level. Mark knew of two possible solutions for this problem. You either boost from down here, next to the crab with a medium ledge grab, or you enter the secret, go down, boost from this bridge. It was quickly discovered that the latter option was the faster one. Very cool little trick you could do is this moving platform boost with a crusher in chamber A. Chamber B was more or less the same as in any percent, with the exception of a boost that we can't do at the start. Which I'm assuming the editor is going to show right here. Fucking hope, otherwise we have a problem. Otherwise, just listen to my beautiful voice. Anyway, Mark and Ryan gave birth to the category, routing it together. After Ryan had already finished few runs, I did a run of my own, and finished it with a time of 10 minutes and 13.73 seconds. I suggested the category to be added to category extensions under these rules. And shortly after, on January 22nd, I added it and submitted to my run. Not much to anyone's surprise, it was beaten shortly after. The amazing part is that in less than 2 hours, the 10 minute barrier was broken. The first run we'll take a look at will be Mark's 10.13. The run starts off in Willow, where Mark went for a medium ledge grab boost to activate the Gargoyle. 
and then proceeded to boost up the luggage with no issues and got the small ledge grab in Hogwarts Crown's first try, entering Forest at 1.28. These times are in-game times, by the way. Inside Forest, Mark missed the jump to skip the falling bridge, but backed it up quickly with a boost. He made his way through the river, the imps, the spiders, jumped to release the rope and boosted from the rock on the side to get up. And after some weird tree shenanigans, he entered the Aragog boss fight. After taking down each web, a player has to beat Aragog themselves, and Mark was able to do so in six cycles, leaving the fight at 5.20. From here, it was time to make his way into the chamber. He jumped off the railing, used a spongified tile to get to the second floor quicker, and after entering the cutscene for chamber backwards, he jumped on the sink to enter chamber itself faster. Inside chamber, he used this spongify tile to go all the way down and then jumped to destroy an ectoplasm from below, which opens the way forward. After an unskippable cutscene, he boosted from the falling rock with a medium ledge grab to get across and entered the pixie room. The fucking pixie room. Inside the pixie room, Mar gets a medium ledge grab on the edge here to get up to the secret, drops down, gets another medium ledge grab to get all the way up and destroy the rope. In chamber 2 then, he uses a long ledge grab on the right side here to get up and triggers the spongify. After that, Mark walks on the invisible collision here and boosts from a medium ledge grab to skip the area. What follows is a boulder chase and in the end, he grabs two safety ingredients. Entering the Basilisk fight, Mark makes a safety potion and is able to take down the snake in three cycles. Yeah, each time the snake pops out of a vent is seen as a cycle, just, just go with it. Mark's run was a fantastic start of a journey that went further than anyone would have expected. The category was short, challenging and fun. Overall, it was entertaining. And it attracted a lot of attention. In particular, it would see two runners who started a rivalry within the category. That rivalry was likely the biggest world record fight in 2022. The first of these runners was IMEC. IMEC was already a seasoned runner of HP2, he had been running the game for well over a year at that point and had experience with pretty much every main category. It's no surprise that when Chungus Percent was added, he immediately jumped at the opportunity to get a new world record. And boy did he get one. IMEC broke the first major minute barrier in the category, getting the first sub 10 minute run clocking in at 9.43 and a half. Here's how he did it. The first difference is that he got a small ledge grab instead of a medium at the first boost, which is a bit faster. But after the luggage boost, Imac did a jump to cut the corner and get a better line to leave Willow at 48 seconds, already two seconds ahead of Mark's PB. He struggled a bit at the small ledge grab in Hogwarts Grounds, getting it fourth try, and then took a bit of a questionable line to enter Forest, who was ultimately able to clear up this time loss in Forest itself. Even though he missed the bridge skip, Imac managed to get a medium ledge grab boost at the river, saving him a bit of time over Mark's run, as well as a faster boost at the end of the level. Instead of the rock on the side, it's quite a bit faster to boost from the tree with a medium ledge grab. All of this resulted in Imac entering the Aragog fight only two seconds behind his own PB. He then managed to kill the giant spider in four cycles, losing a bit more time to his own PB, but ultimately placing him ahead of Mark by almost 30 seconds. His chamber one was just as good as Mark's, hitting both of the difficult boosts first try, 
and much like Mark, Ima grabbed the safety ingredients at the end of Chamber 2, attempted the final boost, which failed. However, due to faster menuing throughout the run and a faster Aragog by two cycles, Imac had now saved 40 seconds to Mark's run. Making a potion for safety and taking out the snake with a three cycle, Imac clocked in his first world record at 9.43 and a half. An impressive feat for the first day of the category submitted mere hours after Mark's run was on the board. The exact same day in the evening hours, a runner who goes by Avram35, also known as Millen, also submitted his first Chungus% percent PB. A PB that would beat IMAX run by almost 20 seconds. Millen was an HP2 veteran holding quite a few individual records at the time and competitive times on pretty much every single HP2 leaderboard. He was very good at optimizing short segments and his menuing was impressive to say the least. A short category like Chungus% percent seemed like his area of expertise and he really quickly proved that to be a fact. For starters, his movement in Willow was really good, he took more optimal lines, even went for a moving platform boost at the luggage. He managed to beat Willow in just over 46 seconds, already an impressive feat. He then opted to boost on the left side in Hogwarts Grounds, definitely a more risky strat that saves 3 seconds over the slower but more consistent right side most runners go for. He got the boost first try and managed to enter Forest at 1.22, the fastest anyone had entered up until that point. Millen then demonstrated his skills in Forest where he played the level really well, nailing bridge skip, saving over 2 seconds over Imac's run, he got the boost at the river, as well as the tree boost at the end. He did slow down twice in between with a few unfortunate ledge grabs before the river boost and missing the row at the end, but ultimately he entered the Aragog fight at 3.03, six full seconds ahead of IMAX PB. He then managed to beat the giant spider in five cycles, ultimately losing some time to IMAC, which he then regains in chamber, which he played really well. At the start of chamber B, he jumped into a medium ledge grab, a small but still worthy time save to be had over the slower long ledge grab from the corner. He decided to not go for the final boost in chamber B because death would be run ending at that pace and Millen also decided not to make a potion for the Basilisk fight, his run ultimately with that becoming the first world record run with a potionless snake. Got a very nice and safe 3 cycle and managed to save quite a bit of time to Imax run due to not making said potion. The end time of this run was 9.24.8.10. The run was really good, but it definitely wasn't perfect. It was obvious that IMAC would have to retaliate, and he did. On February 3rd, IMAC got this run.
Incredibly, while implementing no new strats whatsoever, iMac managed to beat his PB by 27 seconds, by simply playing better and cleaning up some minor mistakes. He managed to kill Aragog in three cycles, which put him significantly ahead. In Chamber A, he got everything first try, and afterwards he played a really clean Chamber B. On a pace like that, and already being a bit low on health, iMac then decided to go for a potion, which was, of course, the right call. He was then able to get a good 3 cycle and finish the run in 9.08.180. A really beautiful and clean run with very few mistakes. With a run like that, Sudden Line was now looking very doable, and although we knew it was possible, this run practically solidified that thought. Imek had lost 16 seconds to brewing a potion. Had he not gone for one and still gotten a 3 cycle snake, he would have broken a very difficult minute barrier. The second barrier to be broken in Chungus Percent. It was now clear Sub 9 was possible. The question remained, who would get it? And when? It was on February 17th that Portal Guy 1000, a new runner, noticed something odd. Ryan was doing Chungus Percent attempts to improve his personal best and was able to consistently get Aragog out of his web, performing essentially a one cycle kill. That, for a very long time, was thought to be completely RNG. However, what Ryan's setup lacked was the ability to hit Aragog's weak spot whenever it was possible. This meant that the one cycle kill was slow and at times even slower than a two or three cycle kill, which was a problem. After messing around with it for a couple of hours, Imac and Portal discovered a way to consistently draw Aragog out of his web and then optimally hit the weak spots as he shows them. I should just reset this run I know, but... I'm gonna see what I can do. I'm pretty sure that was best possible Aragog, by the way. By going all the way back against the wall next to these shrooms, you can then time a jump to the side when Aragog is as close to you as possible. From then, you move to one of his sides and start jumping. When he shows the weak spot, you jump to damage him and then you jump through him. This would reset his attack pattern and he wouldn't shoot any of the webs at you. A huge time save, applicable not only for Chungus percent, but for Glitchless, any percent, and pretty much every other category. The discovery of Aragog manipulation was the biggest time save found in Chungus percent to date, and the fact that it was useful in other categories made it all the better. Chungus percent became quite popular, drawing a lot of attention. Portal, Imac, and Ryan were often streaming attempts, and other runners that played the category were Felix Felicis, a talented glitchless runner, Adisa, Critical, known for the discovery of the Abbey Jump strat in Chamber 1, ex Jessica 1995, another HP2 glitchless runner, Artful Info, a gargantuan HP1 and HP2 player known for finding setups for strats and his passion for the grind, and many others followed. Nixo was hosting a glitchless tournament at the time, in which Portal participated with the slogan Hashtag Chunga's Good Run. And so it was. It was a good run, and people were having fun. It is at this time that I would like to remind you that these opinions are those of my employer. I am getting paid to say these things, and I will leave my opinion out of this video. What do you mean? Wait, I'm, I'm not getting paid for this? Why the fuck am I doing this shit? Cause you're gonna- Well, never mind. In the meantime... With the newly discovered time save, Imac had work to do. The Aragog strat, as we called it, removed a giant amount of RNG from the run. And Imac had time to save to his already sub-optimal 3 cycle. So he got grinding, and he did not disappoint.
The start was pretty good. He managed to get his 46 willow and get the boost in ground's first try. Forest was a little bit rough with the river boost, but the rest of the level was pretty clean. He performed the new Aragog strat flawlessly, golding the split and leaving the fight over 35 seconds ahead. Chamber 1, he played really well. There were a couple of slowdowns that added up, like this ledge grab and missing the final boost. But he once again made a safety potion and finally went in for the snake fight. Unfortunately, the Basilisk didn't cooperate much and the fight ended in a 4 cycle, bleeding quite a bit of time from Imek's time save, but it was still no. enough. Imek successfully clutched the first sub 9 minute run, breaking the second minute barrier with an 8.56.9.70. There was much to improve and Imek knew it, but he was satisfied, so he submitted the run and went on with his day. Little did he know, however, that Avram had not been resting, because a bit later that same day, Avram submitted this run. It was unbelievable. He once again managed to beat Imex's run by 20 seconds. He nailed the new Aragog strat, timing his jumps a bit better than Imek, trying to hit the weak spots as fast as possible. Aside from that, the run was pretty standard. He lost a bit of time at the start due to a second try left side boost, and there were some slip-ups here and there in Forest and Chamber. But in the end, he once again managed to comfortably kill the Basilisk in three cycles without a potion. An 8-3x was considered a really good run at the time, worthy of a world record. But of course, Imek wouldn't have it. He instantly went back to the grind and, well, the same day, he actually got his goal. The run started off slowly with a few mistakes in Forest, causing Imek to fall slightly behind. A tiny slowdown occurred in Chamber 1 at the Ectoplasm, but Imek was still well on pace. After a very lucky non-soft lock, Imek made his way out of Chamber 2, but unfortunately he was quite low on health. Contrary to the previous runs, however, he decided to just wing the snake fight and go in with his health without a potion. And, well, watch what happens. After this absolute miracle, Imek managed to secure a 5 second world record over Avram, once again proving that he owns this category and should not be underestimated. Submitting this run, Imek was done for the day, but still, as this story goes, Milan had other plans, because only 3 hours later another run was submitted, the fourth run this day, claiming to be a world record. There's not really much to say about Avram's 825. He had a rough start in Willow, missing the luggage boost and getting it backwards. He then proceeded to set up for his left side boost with a menu walk, but unfortunately missed it once. The rest of the run, however, he simply played better. 
He cleaned up all of his mistakes in forest and got a pretty much flawless level. He nailed Aragog, got a really good chamber 1 with no slowdowns, a couple of small hiccups in chamber 2 but he was able to clutch it out on very low health, much like Imek, but with an ever so slightly faster 3 cycle. That run was 10 seconds fast with seemingly the same strats. It's fascinating how these two runs 3 hours apart from each other are so incredibly similar. That day, February 18th, was arguably the biggest day for the category. The world record for Chungus Percent was beat not once, not twice, not three times, but four times in a row, on the same day, and the category wasn't even a month old. It was clear that these two runners were the best at it, and they would keep forcing each other to greater heights. Naturally, Avram's record wouldn't last long, but he'd at least hold it for three days this time. 72 hours later, however, Imek submitted another run, and oh boy, what a roller coaster it was. The start was not the greatest, and Imek had several slowdowns in forests, but Aragog went smoothly, and this time there were no slowdowns in chamber. This way, he managed to catch up to Avram's pace upon entering Snake. And after the 3 cycle, we'd expect... Oh my god, no. Bounce. Come on! <laughs> yes! Come on, come on! Yes! Oh, let's go! Let's go! <laughs> yep, he beat Avram's time by 0.8 of a second. The only noticeable difference is in the start of the Aragog fight where Imek opted to destroy the web behind him by holding back and left. This was a bit quicker than destroying the web in front of him, like all runs had been doing all the time. It saved the jump and essentially, well, one second. And that second ended up being all Imek needed. Talk about calling it clutch, huh? Of course, that crown wouldn't last long because literally the next day, Avram would pull off something incredible. For a very long time at that point, there had been one question. Is sub-8 possible in Chungus Percent? For the longest time, the true answer was we really don't know. How low could this possibly go? With this level of optimization that Imek and Avram were going through, it looked like it was barely out of reach. And of course, there's always the occasional mistake here and there. Perfect speedrun doesn't exist. And yet, this run was special. It had its first clear shot at a two-cycle basilisk, a very difficult feat for categories that don't have a potion to use. But Avram just didn't get it. Still, it would have barely missed the sub-8, but it looked well within reach. After that run, Avram knew it for sure. Sub-8 was definitely possible. It was just a matter of when and who. With the ball back to Imek, he was faced with a challenge. This level of optimization was scary, the new implemented IL boost that Avram used in Chamber 1 was very difficult, and Imek had to learn it. Furthermore, he had to compete with Avram's left side and his really good splits. Still, Avram's run wasn't perfect. He got a 46 Willow, but his enter forest was flawless, entering at 120. His forest in Chamber 1 were beautifully flawless, but he still didn't go for the final boost in Chamber 2, insisting it was too risky sacrificing three seconds over Imek. And of course, we can't forget about the Basilisk fight, what is likely the greatest tragedy of the history of Chungus, or one of, we'll get to that later. Snake decided to troll him and vent in the last second before he could finish off the second cycle, forcing a four cycle. 
After that run, Avram saw the potential. He could definitely get sub-8. But Imek wasn't done. As difficult of a challenge as it was to run against this, he had to beat it. And on March 2nd, he pulled off what Portal refers to as his favorite Chungus percent run of all time, the cleanest and most satisfying for all strats it went for. Unlike Avram, Imek preferred to stick to the right side boost at the start, sacrificing about three seconds to his rival. The rest of the game he just played well. It was clean, well-executed movement, excellent menuing, and first try on all strats. Good Aragog RNG, the first attack he does can sometimes lose three seconds if it's the slower variant. Clean IL boost in chamber one, clean chamber two, with of course the final boost which gave him the edge he needed entering the Basilisk fight. And of course, Imek manages to get the three cycle and clutch the 813. Fuck this Gallagher. Fuck this Gallagher. Oh my god. Fuck this game. Holy shit. I'm so tired of grinding this piece of garbage. Like, Fuck this. Fuck that one. God. Holy shit. Oh, fuck off. Okay, I'm, I'm just waiting for a million to get sub 8. I fucking care. This one was just. Really sloppy, really fucking sloppy. In the notes, Imek put in simply the words, waiting for sub-8 Milan. With such a comeback from Imek, Avram would surely retaliate soon, right? Well, unfortunately, that didn't seem to be the case. Days passed, and weeks, and eventually months. Imek's run remained at the top, with Avram's run being just behind him, looming. The truth is, 816 is the final time Avram submitted to the Chungus Percent leaderboard. The grind for optimization in that run was just getting too much. He needed to focus more on real life, more important matters. And the sub 8 never happened. On that day, the great rivalry between Imek and Avram died. Although it lasted a little over a month and a half, the back and forth between Avram and IMAC was one of the most entertaining events in the community to follow, and it made the category all the more exciting. There's clearly time save left. IMAC refused to go for the painful left side boost that Avram loves, and of course, we can't forget the elusive two cycle. A run like that would guarantee a sub eight minute time. That minute barrier remained the final challenge for the community to break, but IMAC was fed up. Fuck this Gallagher! Fuck this Gallagher! Oh my god! Fuck this game! Holy shit! He'd grinded that category to perfection as best as he could, and with Avram not retaliating, he had no reason whatsoever to go for it. There were a few who tried. Portal managed to grind his PB down to an 836, and Ryan was closely behind him with an 842. Still, the skill gap was apparent. Avram and Imek were in a league of their own, well ahead of everyone. It was around April when Portal announced a tournament for the category, one that would bring back many familiar faces and bring in some new ones as well. The Chungus Percent tournament is when things really kicked off.
A lot of time passed, but Porto was promoting the category like an absolute madman. Despite record being out of his reach, he continued to run the category because he was having fun, although the grind was getting quite frustrating at times. He also encouraged pretty much everyone to give the category a try. It was still a short, fun little run that people could have fun with. After the announcement of the tournament, new people joined the Chungus Percent grind. These were talented runners such as Gob, Jamie, Flecky, Fifty, Finn, myself the Shroomstacker, and of course, a runner that would become most formidable, Dr. Kaasknabbelag. With all these new runners joining the party, the leaderboard grew, slowly becoming the biggest and most popular category extension in all of Harry Potter speedrunning. Amongst all of these names, there is one we did not mention. Imex run stood strong for months, unchallenged. However, there is one runner who very slowly caught up. And it's not a username we know or we've seen until now. This was somebody completely new. Ladies and gentlemen, let me introduce you to Ducks91, who later renamed himself to U underscore 0001. We shall refer to this runner as Human because that's what he goes by these days. Human had been improving his new game plus times, trying as hard as possible to get a sub 8 time, but it always seemed barely out of reach. He was very skilled at the game. He was also very good at the movement and overall strats in HP2, despite being a brand new runner who had only been in the community for less than three months. But most importantly, he was very, very good at the Basilisk fight. Possibly one of the best, even until this day getting snake times comparable to Flo, the any percent world record holder. It was only natural that Human would tackle Chungus after New Game Plus. The categories were very similar, though Chungus was widely regarded as the harder of the two. Still, to beat IMX Run, Human had work to do. So he spent a lot of time training, grinding, perfecting every movement, every line, trying his absolute hardest to match the times he had seen. On April 28th, he got his PB down to an 823 pushing out Portal from top 3 by 13 whole seconds. The run had many mistakes in it, but it was the first ever Chungus Percent run that featured a miracle. A potionless, two-cycle, basilisk fight. The run was impressive and proved one thing definitively. With a snake like that, sub-8 could definitely happen. On May the 2nd, he managed to pull off an incredible run an 8.16.2.10, beating Avram's old record by 0.3 of a second. He was actually on an 8.0x pace on that run, but you'll never believe what happened. Much like Avram, the nerves got to him and he choked the two cycle. That run would have beaten a long lasting titan, Imek, if only the basilisk fight had gone a little better. Human left the following notes in his run. Insane pace, got stress, choked snack, but this does prove that I have what it takes to sub 8 this. So I will try to sub 8 this. And he was dedicated, so he continued the grind. Imex's run was difficult to beat, but he'd proved he could do it, so all he could do is keep grinding. Attempt after attempt, trying to get that elusive two cycle in a run. It would be enough. And on May the 5th, he finally got a chance. The start was really shaky, he lost quite a bit of time entering forest, he went for the right side boost and lost quite a bit of time in the forest level itself too. However, he knew he had a lot of time saved to Aragog due to missing a few crits and the giant spider giving him the slow attack. He managed to gold the Aragog split and safely made it out. Upon entering chamber, he opted to not go for the difficult IL boost. Instead, he went for the Addy Jump, a much easier and safer strat that is only a few seconds slower. That guaranteed him a consistent Chamber 1, 
while trying his hardest to get a two-cycle snake kill in a run. Chamber 2 went alright as well, and now it was time. It was finally time to do what Avram set out to do on his run all that time ago. The first ever Chungus Percent speedrun with a two-cycle basilisk was now a fact. And sure, the run was far from perfect, but it was enough. Enough to beat IMAX record from months ago by four whole seconds. This was huge, and human proof that he was capable of doing even better. IMAX run was a staple and it stood for a grand total of 64 days the longest time anyone had held a Chungus record at the time. And it was now humans. All the grinding, all the Basilisk practice, it paid off. He obviously wasn't under the category. Human wanted that elusive, fabled sub-8 time and he knew he could get it. But for now, he had earned a well-deserved rest. He did try a few attempts here and there, but matching a pace like that and running against a potionless two-cycle is incredibly difficult. So, human grided. Quietly. However, silence started creeping in again. Days passed, then weeks. There was no one. Nothing. Human was focused on grinding any percent and glitchless for HP2, and no one besides Portal was grinding for a top time, so the run remained unchallenged. Until something incredible happened. Because we were very soon going to find out that there exists a skill level of Harry Potter gaming that is beyond any of us. A skill level which was great enough, perhaps, to even kill the category all together. Oh my god, oh my god, oh my god, oh my god, oh my god. <laughs> Yo, what the fuck? Oh. <laughs> what the fuck, man? I tried my best not to, but I can do it. I am very clueless. My gold! Sorry. There's not a single person in the Harry Potter speedrunning community that hasn't heard the name Flo203. Like, seriously, the man's a beast. Flo is an incredibly talented French speedrunner who is known to learn games and categories very quickly and he will get really good at them. His consistency is what shines the most. Due to a lot of practice and patience, Flo will demolish a game as long as he enjoys playing it and he will quickly climb up to the top. 
His most notable achievements are holding the Arctifector crown in the past, all eight Harry Potter world records for the PC, at the same time for both any percent and hundred percent. Long story short, Flo knows the ins and outs of these games, so it was only a matter of time until he tackled Chungus percent, which of course he did. Seemingly annoyed with the silly category throughout the run, Flo managed to destroy the record effortlessly in only 8 attempts and bring it down to 8-0-0-800. Sub 8 was incredibly close, but Flo only set out to get the record, which he did end up getting. A few very minor mistakes cost him the second he required to achieve the sub 8, and yet, this was a gargantuan time to beat. Flo's menuing and movement, it was unmatched. His experience was showing, and he did an incredible job to demonstrate what we should do with the category. This record, it smashed the leaderboard. Anyone who wanted to beat it had to match Flo's menuing, match his snake fight, and get clean level movement altogether. It was the greatest challenge anyone had ever faced and of course it it didn't happen days once again turned into weeks and then into months portals tournament was drawing ever so close but no one had the skill to match flow portal and human both tried portal managing to get his time down to an 8 12 finally beating imac and afram's infamously difficult times human managed to get his time down to an 808 and a runner that came really close is another top runner from the main boards, Luzak. He managed to get a time of 8.02. Luzak is most known for his menu walks, fast menuing overall, and swag strats. He is also an incredibly talented glitchless runner, having held the 100% glitchless world record at the time. Another runner with great love for HB2. Sadly, he missed a crit in the Aragog fight, which backfired immensely, costing him a little over 3 seconds. Had that not happened, Luzar could have broken the final minute barrier. The Basilisk fight was also dodgy, but it was in fact a 2-cycle. With Portal's tournament drawing near, more and more people would aim to improve their times in Chungus percent, but since this thing from Luzark, nobody even came close to Flo's... Manol? What? Hi. Um, I'm sorry, who are you? It's me. What do you mean, it's me? What are you doing here? Yes? Okay, if you don't mind, I'm trying to tell a story here. Could you please not? No. Okay, mystery person. Who are you and why are you here? I'm a con. Okay, look, this story has gone on for so fucking long and you're interrupting it, and I'm not getting paid for this shit. Can this wait? You fool! You forgot piss, baby! Piss what now? Changus became so popular that it got the attention of an unknown troll in the community. This troll submitted the run to the leaderboard with the nickname PissBaby69. Okay, but what does this have to do with the overall history of the run that I'm trying to tell here? It matters because it was funny, regardless if it was a troll or not. The video had some funny air rap music in the background. A lot of people have been accused of being this baby, including me. This accusation made me play Changus later. I still have nightmares of Snackman. Anyway, the account was later deleted as well as the submission. It's become quite a meme ever since. Um, okay. I still don't see how this was vital information whatsoever. In fact, I'd have skipped it altogether, but if you say so. You know, apart from maybe the pain of Snake, Snake is bullshit. Snake not free. Wait, you don't have a run on the leaderboard, though. Um, I'm gonna people leave. Oh... Okay? No. Okay, that was weird. Anyway, where were we? Yes, uh, Flo's time. So it remained uncontested and it quickly became the new longest standing world record. 65 days, 
beating IMAX Old 813. But as the tournament drew near, a familiar face picked the category back up and started grinding. Someone with experience, someone who had been taking a long break. Ladies and gentlemen, IMEC was back. And he was pissed. And on July 29th, a day before the final weekend of the Chungus Percent tournament, IMEC did something unbelievable. Cold. I got a beef of that screwed my timing. Nice. I even lose time to wreck you. Alright, oh, that's good. You can tell by his reaction that this was something huge. After his comeback to the category and amazing performance of the first weekend of the tournament, IMEX set out to beat the Chungus Percent world record with a sub 8. And he promised he'd get it before the tournament was over. On that, he over delivered. He got such a good time. A 7.53 wasn't even plausible for us, yet here it was. There were no major mistakes except from picking up a mushroom in forest and missing an Aragog hit due to an unfortunate frame perfect jump at a bad time, but that was it. Those mistakes amounted to a grand total of 4 seconds of time save. He also went for the right side boost so there's an extra 3 seconds there should he need them. It was a well deserved and satisfying victory, one that would remain in history forever. IMAC had broken every single minute barrier possible since the first sub minute run. He achieved the first sub 10, the first sub 9, and now the first sub 8. A run like that would take an insane amount of practice and skill to match, let alone beat. We'd like to take this opportunity to give a shout out to this run, which happened three hours later. Dr. Kaz Knoblad achieved the second ever sub 8 minute run, with a time just as impressive, a 7.54. The only reason that run didn't get world record is because Aragog did the slow attack, losing 3 seconds. Kaz may have very well finished the category off if he had simply got good RNG. He was a brand new runner running exclusively Chungus and joining for the tournament. He developed advanced menuing skills incredibly fast and became a top Chungus Percent runner. He also didn't seem to struggle with the hard strats and movement. And with that, in one single day, the sub 8 minute barrier was broken twice with two gargantuan times. Flo was being pushed down to third place. It didn't seem likely that IMAX run would be beaten again. It would seem now, four months later, he finally had his crown back for good. A well-deserved reward. I fucking deserve this, I don't care. And chamber one was so bad too. <laughs> What the fuck, dude? Oh, I'm shaking. 
I'm sorry, what? Portal, really? Dude, you're telling me this fucker got world record. Oh, come on. Don't fucking bullshit. No, we are not making fairy tales up. I know this is your video, but we are not doing this, okay? You cannot, for the love of okay, God- Okay, 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 Seven, calm down. Let me take over on this one. No, this is not how the fucking story goes. Come on. That's just, I, it's okay, it's okay. It's okay, I got this. So, the reality was, during the tournament, which we'll talk about later, a lot of people were going for the sub-8. I mean, sure, Flo's time was good, but... I mean, look at this. The guy literally wasted time picking up this frog. Like, come on. What are you doing? Anyway, the race for sub-8 was getting intense, and it was pretty close. Except for IMEC. <laughs> but we had Portal, Cass, Human, and Vlad, a talented new Bulgarian runner, were all going for sub-8 at the same time, which essentially created a pretty spicy competitive environment for the leaderboard. Like, seriously, we hadn't seen shit like that since Abram versus IMEC. It was, it was insane stuff. Unfortunately, our boy Portal was a little late to the party. He got a 7.52 on August 8th, nine days after IMAX run, and about a week after the tournament was over. Honestly, who could say what's better about that run? It was an improvement by less than a second, and maybe had something to do with Portal not picking up a mushroom. No, you literally stood on it and dropped it, you fathers. Come on, man. That was such a good for it. Anyway. Portal and IMAX became homies throughout the entire Chungus percent thing, and IMAX taught him a couple tricks from his bag, you know? Better movement, menuing advice, how to talk to girls, why crying is okay, stuff like that. Haha, <laughs> kidding. Anyway, we kick off our boy Portal's run with a decent 45 Willow, followed by an excellent first try left side boost, and a mwah, 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 delicious spicy Enter Forest Gold. Forest went pretty well. Uh, uh, did he just pick up a mushroom? Oh. I digress. Anyway, flawless forest. Not. He nails the Aragog strat, uses his own little jump optimization for it. Look at him go. IL boost was, of course, not a problem, except for the fact that Portal decided to bring up his map to check if he was going the right way. He did that twice. It's pretty slow. There's an overall perfect end to chamber, and he finishes with a beautiful two cycle. I mean, look at that green. Look at that green, baby. Oh, God. I'm so proud. And that is the story of how Portal finally got the record that he always wanted, even though he was always a few steps behind. Hey, uh, Seven, you good? You still, you still with me? Yeah, yeah, I believe I've recovered. I just couldn't really comprehend the- You're alright, buddy. Alright, bye everyone, see you later. Bye! I, I guess... I don't know that guy. Anyway, what Portal had done was honestly impressive. The third ever sub A time, a record as well, an incredibly impressive feat. Portal was competing with some great runners for this. Okay, like, I'm not gonna shower you with a million instances of praise, okay? It was just barely enough to edge it out. Now, until IMEX inevitable retaliation, I'm sure Portal would be able to relax. <laughs> Yo, eight attempts, exactly last time. Exactly same amount of attempts than last time. Literally eight attempts. Oh, come on. Flow, again, really? You people do realize that every single time another person gets a goddamn record, this video becomes like fucking five minutes longer because the people who wrote this <laughs> script can't fucking write scripts. Okay there, seven boy. Step aside and let Uncle Vlad handle this. Fucking god damn it. After the Chungus tournament, Flo set his eyes on the world record once more, but this time it won't be so easy, uh, so he set out the strat hunting. He found a faster line after the left side boost at the start, one that provided to be much easier than the previous method. He also found a few new strats in the chamber, but they're not applicable for runs, so I won't talk about them for now. Naturally, Flo took, and I kid you not, exactly Eight attempts to beat the record again. Picked up the frog before chamber again. What are you doing? That type of shenanigans. 
was very close and he entered the snake fight a bit behind Porto. So he needed a really, really good snake for it to be enough. Flo got a 54 second to cycle. A sub 1 minute snake is good. A 54 is godly. There's pretty much no point to talk about the rest of his run. It's what you expect from the any percent world record holder. Very few mistakes, clean movement and good menuing. Everything hard was made to look easy. Floran beat Portal by half a second. Thank you, Vlad. Anyway, it was clear that there wasn't much time saved left within the category. Every second was now a barrier to be overcome, that's how far the category had been optimized. People started considering ridiculously stupid strats like lag jumps and unreliable boosts to save time, but these were not to be used, at least not yet. There was still time to save in Flo's run, and the person who would save it was human. A day after Flo's record, human submitted a time of 7.51.160. He had crossed yet another second barrier. The run was extremely impressive and demonstrated unmatched skill in some parts. It started with the right side boost, already losing 3 seconds. In forest, he got Lumisless without a problem and then got an auto boost in the river to land right in front of the vines, saving a jump. This run had an unmatched forest and a seemingly perfect chamber, with a solid snake fight to close it off. Human really was living up to his potential, proving he can take the category to the 740s, our current theoretical human minimum. Unless we start doing dumb stuff and hit everything, plus get perfect RNG and a perfect snake fight. With so much activity, Human was keeping himself derusted, ready to lose the record any minute. But then a week passed, and then 10 days passed. It seemed things had died. <laughs> Of course, Portal does it again. I mean, at this point, even I have to admit that Portal had proved he was one of the best Chungus runners and really wanted the record, at least for a bit longer. So he didn't stop grinding. After an intense, painful grind, he got his time down to a 7.50, almost breaking the final 10 second barrier, at least for now. What was really impressive about that run were the two long ledge grabs he got during the two final Chamber 1 boosts. They're possible to make, but incredibly difficult. One requiring an auto boost, a method of boosting involving holding down an arrow key and dragging the mouse in the opposite direction to get as many inputs in as possible. The rest of his run was really good with a clean forest and a solid snake. However, the exact same day, Human convinced Portal to go for the final 10 second barrier that was available at the moment. He convinced him to go for a 7-4x. It wouldn't be easy, but Portal got to the grind. Run after run, reset after reset. The smallest mistake was completely unacceptable. Runs would die at 56 second snakes because they weren't a 54. He needed to match his best times to the best of his ability. And finally, after countless hours and thousands of attempts, he got it. A 749.
Finally. Holy shit. The run was incredibly clean. He lost a second in forest to pick up a frog, but got it back in chamber, performing the boosts with medium ledge grabs instead of long, which is faster. He then closed it out with the two cycle and the 54 snake and portal was finally done with the category. He had also figured out a new way to do the Aragog fight more optimally, doing an extra crit during the first phase of the fight, which saved him a second consistently. Portal was able to get one minute flat Aragog fights without any issue. The question remains, however, was his run perfect? Well, of course not. Portal made some tiny mistakes that added up, specifically in Forest, so there is time to save there. His Aragog and Basilisk fights are incredibly clean, though they aren't tied with the theoretical minimum. The truth is, the perfect speedrun doesn't exist. At the end of the day, we're all humans, having fun with one of our favorite childhood games, beating it as Fat Harry, because why the hell not? That being said, the category ended up being incredibly optimized, and eventually up until 6th place everyone had a sub 8 minute time, which is indeed impressive for a category extension of a Harry Potter game. Most of the other extensions there lay forgotten and are run rarely, one or two times for fun, but Chunga's percent was special. It symbolized a part of the community coming together to bring down a new and unique challenge. Sure, the run was short and allowed for few mistakes, making it incredibly frustrating to grind. I mean, the Basilisk fight in particular would be the most notable run killer among Chamber 1 in the very first ground's ledge grab boost. There was no room for mistakes, and yet our runners pushed through. They optimized the category as if it were a main leaderboard, a level of optimization that some argued should have never even happened for Chungus Percent. But they did it. This, however, concludes our story of the world record progression of Chungus Percent, at least for now. Things went silent for a while, and although Portal expected the run to be beaten quickly, the reality was it wasn't. Days passed, weeks, and eventually months. No one would challenge Portal's run. The category had just gotten way too optimized and competitive. There was obviously potential for more without implementing any new strats. 743 looked barely possible, so the time save was definitely there. Someone just had to come and get it. But no one did. Eventually, Portal's run became the longest standing record on the leaderboard. And it stayed that way. Quiet. Forgotten in peace. That is until Portal started writing this video. Anyway, ladies and gentlemen, I am 7 Drost 6 from 7th Roll, and this concludes my part of the story. However, stay tuned, for there are two more stories left to tell. The final minute world record rush of November and December 2022, and a brief tale of the Chunkus Percent Tournament. With the help of Nixo, Jigoto, and some other personal friends, Ryan and Porter were able to organise the Chungus Percent Tournament. The tournament was done on this website, Challenge, with a best of three double elimination format. This meant that if you lost your first matchup, you aren't immediately out of the tournament, but instead you get sent to a loser's bracket, in which everyone who's lost the matchup can compete for eventually going back into the winner's bracket. This format guaranteed that all runners got to play at least four rounds before they were out of the tournament. The idea for a best of three came from the fact that category was too short, and since many mistakes can happen along the way, it would only be fair to allow the players to do at least two rounds. The tournament featured 21 runners and was done over two weekends. The first weekend was streamed on Portal's Twitch channel and the second weekend on Ryan's. Since every one of those runners deserved their own shout out, we will quickly list them. Myself included in the following list, these are all the runners that participated in the very first ever Chungus Percent tournament, aptly named by everyone as the Chungus Tawny. Naturally, we will leave a link in the description where you can find each and every single one of these runners. iMac, Avram35, PortalGuy1000, Nixo, Gorb, Feel My Goods, It's Just Underscore Vlad, Flecky, White Monster, 
Dr. Cascanabla, Mark Slaw 11, Akon Tiainen, Renee underscore TFD, Jamie 20745, which happens to be myself, Felix Felicis, X Jessica 1995, Gertie, 50 not 50, Findrood, and 7 draws to 6. There were highs and lows galore, because anything can happen in a tournament setting. Because in a run as short as this, anyone including the tournament underdog can pour sneaky wins, and surprise contenders can even appear. And even to the injuries I caused myself along the way, and still recovering by the way, and even face and voice reveals of the members of the community that were unknown beforehand. We also had the generosity of the organizers to allow some exhibition matches that allowed open challenges for competitors that didn't have the chance to face each other during the tourney itself. Honestly, there is too much to talk about here. The tournament itself deserves a video of its own, but I'll try to quickly run you by the highlights. Some of the highlights include Dr. Cass and Portal's cutscene for 10 round 3 in which they decided to both watch the cutscenes for the final matchup between them. Unfortunately for Portal, that backfired immensely, since he was playing on the English language and they lost him quite some time. Another highlight was the Jamie vs Akon matchup at the end, in which they had quite the experience at the start, failing the grounds boost 20 times each. There was also a point where Portal and Ryan raced the gold card challenge as Chungus, for some reason. Uh, and we can't forget the final, the matchup between Dr. Cass and Abela, a new runner with incredible consistency who'd been able to beat Imec, Portal and Ryan, and White Monster, a Polish runner who had tied Flo's 8 minute flat time by the end of the tournament. It was quite the fight, but in the end the tournament was won by White Monster. He had a lot of experience with HV2 and managed to exit the tournament undefeated. The final matchup was best of 5 instead of a best of 3. It was held on Ryan's channel and was quite the exciting matchup. And of course, the big surprise at the end, Portal asked Flo if he could kindly come in as a special guest and race the winner of the tournament. Flo agreed, and the race between Monster and Flo was quite an amazing one to say the least. It was really close, but in the end, Monster came out victorious, concluding the first official Chungus Present tournament. Of course, the story continues. Portal and Ryan have agreed to host another Chungus Present tournament at roughly the same time next year. Until then, who knows? Maybe the record will be taken down and the 74x barrier will be broken. For now though, it remains a challenge to be conquered. The community efforts for the category continue to this day. There are many strategies that have not been implemented in a Chungus Percent run yet, TM. You'll see most of them on screen as I speak. These all save up to 2 seconds at most each and are incredibly inconsistent and unreliable to go for. And yet, if the time is to be pushed down even further, they need to be utilized in the future. These strats were a collaborative effort of the community and were found by Flo, Luzak, and Human. Furthermore, even though the 100% category has proved to be impossible castless, Luzak and Dr. Cass have recently routed every single possible card and secret you could get as Chungus without casting, including the ones you can buy. They call this project Chundo, short for Chungus and Hundo. You can find a video for these possible strats in the description. Shortly after Portal started working on this video, the board started moving again. Imec was inspired to do runs, and so he got right on the D-Rust. However, beating Portal's run would prove to be a difficult task. Although Imec had a lot of experience running against world records in Chungus Percent. He started with practicing individual levels, and shortly after, full runs. On November 26th, he managed to get his personal best down to a 750.490, less than a second behind Portal's PB. In the description of the run submission, he simply put in the words, World record soon. Had to go for the frog. And so he continued the grind, and after two painful grind sessions, lasting about a total of seven hours, he finally did it. Portal's run that had stood for over three months was beaten by a 747. In the description of the run, Imek put it bluntly, the king is back. And so he was. He had once again proven, after months of inactivity, that he is the master of Chungus. Here's how he did it. 
The start of the run was pretty standard, with the only notable mistake being jumping a little bit late at the final jump of Willow. He managed to save some time entering Forest, which ended up being key for getting the record. His Forest was overall really solid, managing to clear up the mistakes that Portal made along the way, including not having to grab the frog. The end of Forest was a little scuffed, but he got there in the end. Imek was two seconds ahead of the record entering the Aragog fight, but unfortunately, Portal's Aragog fight was flawless in his PB, so with very small mistakes, Imek unfortunately ended up losing three and a half seconds, putting him behind. It was not over yet, though, because he still had Chamber to go. Portal's Chamber levels, were, although clean, were also not perfect. He played really safe, taking a second to set up the two boosts in Chamber 1 to make sure he gets them. Imek got both of them pretty quickly and saved nearly two seconds to Portal, putting him ahead of the record once again. In Chamber 2, he saved time to Portal to the bridge skip boost, getting a better line after it, and also in the boulder section with more well-timed jumps, and to the final boost. Overall, Imek entered the Basilisk fight two seconds ahead of Portal. Beating Portal's final boss fight would be a difficult challenge. That snake is tough to kill in 54 seconds. But after a shaky first phase, Imek managed to get an amazing first cycle, leaving the snake at less than half HP. In the end, he managed to clutch a 54 snake, beating Portal's gold by a tenth of a second. On the final split, he lost a bit of time to getting a worse speed boost off the trader's head, but it was enough. Imek had once again come back to reclaim his Chungus Percent crown. Uh huh. Is it me again? Really? I'm back already? Okay. All right. Okay. Let's go. Let me just let me just grab my script. Okay. Okay. All right. Now I'm seeing it here right now. Okay. Looks like some people decided to get some last minute records and make Portal do more work, which I respect. You know, no shame. Uh, anyway, okay, so it seems like Imek wasn't the only one who decided to randomly wake up from his slumber and go for the record. He gets to 747, and suddenly a certain someone's interest is also peaked. And no, it wasn't Flo. That dude's been stuck grinding the 32 and any percent for like, ever. Look at this. He gets fucked so many times, he even gets a 33 flat. Um, anyway, so human decides he wants to go for the chungus percent record again. You know, he has a clean end game. He plays the category for uh, Probably more hours than anybody else and he has a good snake fight. What else do you need other than a good snake fight really? The grinding began immediately after IMAX run was verified and of course a bit of de-rust was needed But human wasn't scared of practice. He would get there no matter how long it took no matter how much blood sweat tears and other bodily fluids he had to pour into this run he would get the record it doesn't matter if it takes years it doesn't matter if it takes decades he would get it so five days later he beat imax pb i mean you gotta you gotta give it to him five days that's not bad um let's look at the run so similar to imac he's comparing against portal splits here since portal provided them to the community earlier in case anyone wants to take a shot at the record what a doll the start of the run was similar to imac's but it's in forest that he got to show us his potential his movement was oh so clean his menuing super good and he saved about half a second with the auto boost at the river here just really good stuff his ending of forest is also notably cleaner than imac since he doesn't get stuck on these mushrooms which is like finally Someone with some common sense? Aragog fight, solid, not a problem. But due to a small movement error on his way to Chamber 1, he loses a tiny bit of time. Chamber 1 and 2 were really good. Human implements one of those strats Flo found here in Chamber 2, which lands you just about close enough to activate the Flipendo, kill the Pixie, and activate the Spongify. You know? It ain't much, but it's honest, Tom Save. Haha, <laughs> I was trying to go for like the meme voice. Anyway, his boulder chase is a little suboptimal, but he does save 0.8 to portal in the end. And then there's the basilisk fight. And here we see proof, ladies, gentlemen, and others that gods can bleed. See him getting caught in the poison right there? Yeah, that's a mistake. It's really not that bad, and it's just enough. Human manages to close it out with a time of 7.46.04, which is an extremely impressive time, and it proves that the fabled 7.45 is super doable. Maybe even a 7.3x. At that thought, the runner's mouths were watering just at the smell of competition, but it was up to Imac to retaliate. And no oh boy! Oh boy. Imac did not disappoint.
But of course, Imek wasn't planning to give up on that record that easily, especially considering how hard he had to work to get it again. So as soon as Human's run was verified, Imek responded saying, this ain't over, and he got back to the grind, knowing it wouldn't be easy and that he would have to get at least a 745. But only two days after Human's PB was verified, Imek submitted this run. The start of his run was a little bit shaky since he took a lot of damage in Willow and so he was forced to take a frog in the forest, but he did still enter the forest in the fastest pace ever seen on a run before. He opted to go for the normal boost at the river, cleaning up his mistakes from earlier, and he also didn't get stuck on the mushrooms. And then after a solid Aragog fight, it was on, and he ended up only 0.1 seconds behind human's time. Knowing that he now had to deliver to get the world record, his chamber 1 was flawless. He even ended up saving a bit of time over human's world record by having a couple faster setups for some of the boosts. Entering chamber 2 he then went for the classic medium ledge grip jump as opposed to the new strat that we saw human go for, just to play it a little bit safe. Unfortunately though, he got stuck in the wall after the boost on the bridge skip, so he lost quite a bit of time to the world record. And entering Basilisk, it really didn't look that good. He was one second behind human's time, he was on about half his health bar, and pretty much needed a really really good 2 cycle to get the record back. But then, after the closest and most clutch Basilisk fight in Chungus history, he did manage to leave the snake 0.7 seconds ahead of the world record, and just like that, he had done it. Imek had reclaimed the Chungus crown once more, after it being knocked off his head briefly. Let's fucking go! Yes! And so we ended up with this truly incredible time, including a lot of small optimizations that led to an improvement by a second, and the top 3 runners standing in the 740s on the leaderboard. The community had optimized Chungus with so much care, love, patience and skill, regardless of the fact that it was only a category extension, so I think we can all be very proud to say, Chungus, good run. Oh, finally released you guys. I'm so happy. You guys okay? Right, I'll see you soon. God, 30 pages of torture. That was way too long. I don't know what Portal was thinking. I mean... What the fuck? What's going on? Why, why is the music playing again? That's the ominous theme that Portal was... What? No, 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 go away, shoot, no, 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 someone, stop it, white text guy, do something, no, portal, are you fucking mental, we are not going to do any percent, I just read 30 fucking pages for you and that was a single goddamn year of a category extension, now imagine what you would have to actually do for any percent, we don't have the fucking resources, the knowledge, we've got Deadly fucking squat! No, 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 you are not making me do this. I quit. I'm going to hide in a desert or a cave or a jungle or fucking... I'm gonna hide under Aragog's balls. There you go. That You can't follow me there. What do you mean soon? We haven't even started working on this yet. No one has. Oh, they will. Sure, sure, man. Whatever you say. I'm going to fucking go under Aragog's balls right now. You are not going to find me. Are you fucking... What? Wait, no, no, wait, wait, portal, we don't have to do this, we do not, no, get off of me, portal, Renee will hear about this portal, Renee will hear about this,
Oh my god. Can Tungus air dog? Tungus air dog can't do webs. Tungus air dog charges only. Oh, that is... That's great! <laughs> Chungus air gun! Fuck! Fuck! Yes! Bro, that's the first time I made that jump today. That bridge is so hard to do on Tungus. 